Today, we're going to look at how to do precedent transactions or M&A transactions to value a business. And so let's jump straight in and, and show you what I've done here and explain what's going on. So in this table above, I've uh, replicated a, a list of potential transactions that have happened. So this data would come from public sources. Um, you, for example, here, company A sold for $150 million. That's the enterprise value. Um, its revenue was $125 million. Its EBITDA was $12 million. And so as a result, it's very simple math to say, okay, it traded at a, as a multiple of revenue at 1.2 times. So what is that? That's the enterprise value divided by the revenue. So it traded for $150 million of total value relative to $125 million of revenue. And we do the same with the EBITDA. So the enterprise value divided by the EBITDA gets you an EBITDA multiple as well. And you do this for all the relevant transactions. So if you're selling a company that's in the hospitality space, these would be other hospitality transactions that have been announced with numbers um, that have been announced too. We typically in the industry would pull this data from something like FactSet, PitchBook, CapIQ, but you can, if you don't have access to those sort of things, pull them from press releases as well. Like uh, if, if a number was disclosed, like the value and the revenue, et cetera, that would be in the press release for the transaction. So here we've got six different companies that have had M&A transactions. We've listed off those stats. We've calculated the multiples here. So you can see the, the multiples as a, as a multiple of revenue. And you can see the same thing on the EBITDA side of things as well. And then what we've done is taken a simple average of all of those transactions. So an average revenue multiple, on average, these six companies, they traded for 1.7 times revenue and 8.3 times EBITDA. So then we look at this and we say, okay, how, do we, how does this apply and impact the valuation of the business that we're trying to value? So let's say we're trying to value a business that has 10 million of revenue. What we typically do is, you know, you could just take that 1.7 average, which is, you know, straight from there, but you'd like to have a little bit of a range. So you can take a, you know, 20% plus or minus discount to that. So, you know, the range comes out as 1.4 to 2.1. You can obviously play around with what the range is here. And I'll show you this math and this, this little formula that I've done to be able to automate some of this so that you're not uh, manually changing the text and everything. The other thing you could do is you could say, okay, I want a min and a max off of this. So you could do equals min and take the minimum multiple and you could do equals max and take the maximum multiple, you know, and that would show a bigger spread, obviously, in this case, than the 20% premium and 20% discount that I've done. It's a little bit of a wide range, so I typically wouldn't do that and just would use just a 20% spread. But what I've done here is I've made it so that uh, this is all dynamic. You could change this. So if you change this to 30, you can see that the discount here changes to 30%. And this obviously changes. So let's run through that math so you can see how that works. So this is simply pulling the 1.7 from the average. And then this minimum takes 1.7 times 1 minus the discount. So basically times 80%. And then this does the opposite, takes the average times 1 plus the discount or the premium in this case. And so that's how you get the range. How does the text here change? Well, this is quite a nice little formula as well, which I'll go into in more detail in another video. But the end text is quite nice. So basically what it does, is says, you can see here in the brackets, it says minimum and then end text. It pulls this cell and what format it needs to be in. And then you just put end and another piece of text in, in brackets. And that gets you minimum. And so this bit here, the 20% is always dynamic these things don't change. Um, it's quite a nice way of being able to really, like a lot of time you might change this discount and be like, oh, 25%, and you forget to change the text. And it just, it's just a way of linking it all together and making it very dynamic and very easy not to, to make mistakes. So in this case, let's go back to the 20%. What, what do we do then? So we take the 10 million of revenue times the minimum multiple of 1.4, and we get a $14 million value for the company that we're trying to value. 
at the average, it's 17 million, and it's the same math, revenue times the average. And then on the max, it's the revenue times the maximum multiple. And simply so on this case, you're coming up with a valuation of 14 to 21 million for this business. In uh, future videos, I'll look at other ways to value businesses, but you would do the same thing, obviously, for the EBITDA multiple. So exactly the same math. You just put EBITDA here. You take the EBITDA multiples here and the same math down here. Um, anyway, hope that helps kind of understand a very quick way of looking at M&A transaction comps or precedent transactions. And uh, I'll see you next time.